Good morning, Christ Church. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Thank you, team. I'm Pastor Darrell. Welcome to worship. Welcome if you are here live. Welcome if you are watching us on the internet or on cable. Uh, we have an opportunity for the next 60 minutes to take all the time in the world and spend time in God's presence. Let me share with you a couple of quick announcements. As you are aware, we've had a pretty dramatic spike in COVID cases in our county. So we are asking you to mask as much as possible. Um, when I'm not up here speaking, I will be masked. Sam is doing the same thing. Um, it, it makes it hard to sing. I get, I get carried away singing and I let out a big long breath on a note and then I try to inhale real fast and it's like being waterboarded. That sucker comes up against your, but you know what? I'm just having fun and loving that we can still do what we do. So we're going to keep singing, but we'd ask you to use your mask. Um, the front entrance is still under construction. We should be back able to use our front entrance next week, which is good because we have a Salvation Army kettle that will be out on the kind of patio area, the new patio area, next Sunday with somebody ringing the bell. Salvation Army is having trouble uh, with COVID where they can be and not be, so we're going to try to help them out and have a kettle here. As you notice, Operation Christmas Child boxes are on the altar. There's a bunch out in the narthex. Um, we've asked you to bring them in today. If you didn't remember, whatever, get them to us as soon as you can so we can get them where they need to go as they go through the process to get to their final destination in time for Christmas. There's also out on the um, welcome desk some Rotom calendars from the ministry that we support in Africa. Uh, they may make a great Christmas gift. They have photographs of that ministry, but they need those orders by November 20th. So if that's something you want to do, you need to get that order in ASAP. Wednesday's our next drive-up dinner. If you've been anxious to help out with one and haven't had a chance, this is your opportunity. Get a hold of Ann out at the information desk and tell her you're willing to help. And there is a Thanksgiving service. It'll be the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Um, you saw the slide. Uh, the one with Roethlisberger in it. You know, we're thankful for Thanksgiving and the Steelers winning season at this point and that Ben's healthy. I think that's where we're going with that. But anyway, it's catching my attention, so that's all that matters. Okay? You've got the mic, right? That's right. There it is. There it is. I got the mic. I get to interpret it however I want. I got accused at 8 o'clock of calling Nick Matt because I said Matt put Roethlisberger on the slide. And they thought I meant Matt Wagner. No, 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 no. Matt Baszler does our announcement slides. I know the difference between Nick Billingsley and Matt Wagner. Not that I haven't made that mistake before, right, Sam? I'm Sam. Just say yeah. I'm Sam. <laughs> Megan, when you laugh, it encourages him. Don't do that. Hey, just welcome. Uh, we're here to have fun, but most importantly, we're here to worship God. So pray with me, would you please? Lord, it is just a wonderful day to be in your presence. We have the opportunity to, to stand before you and to recognize that you do indeed love us. I pray, Father, that as we sing, as we stand in your presence, that all the assignments of the enemy would be canceled, that anything that is in our head that is not of you would go away, that this morning we would hear only from your Holy Spirit, that we would only hear words of love. Speak to us in these moments, Lord, through song, through word, through connection. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Welcome to worship, folks. Good morning. Scripture says, John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this. And they lay down their life uh, for a friend. We come today to give our honor to the one who gave his great love for us by sending his son, Jesus Christ. We begin by giving honor to God for his goodness, his greatness. He is uh, rich in love, slow to anger. Let us first focus on Him, and then we'll drill down a little deeper as to how much that grace and that love really applies to us today. Let us stand and let us honor the Lord with our song. Sing like me. 
Lord, we worship your holy name. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you that you are slow to anger and you come to seek and to draw us to you. Draw us closer to you today. Lord, thank you for your grace, your, your love for us that we do not deserve, but yet you chose to give just the same. May that grace be something that we do not take for granted, but we remember deeply today as we come into your presence. Fill us and empower us with your spirit so that we may receive and live that love that you first gave to us. We continue our worship, Lord, for you are worthy of our praise and you are the giver of all that we need. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I
You may be seated. I'm going to make a, just a little of a bit of a turn here. This week is Veterans Day, and we want to not forget the veterans that are with us today and those that are watching from home or elsewhere. And we also must not forget that uh, God has blessed us as a nation. And it seems that the author of the song that we are going to sing knew that uh, we were not a flawless nation and depended on God's grace to sustain us and God's love. So we're going to sing that song today, and I'm going to ask you to begin by just remaining seated. And then partway through, I'm going to ask the veterans to stand. If you're here, if you're a veteran that has served in the military, that has given of your time to make us free and help us enjoy the freedom and the liberties we have, then we want to honor you. And those watching from home, know that you are also our heroes, American heroes, tried and true. Let's sing. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies. here if you're a veteran has served in one of the branches of the military we invite you to stand we honor you as a hero today let's stand oh beautiful veterans that have stood and those that are home watching, thank you. We'll, we will be remembering you this Wednesday on Veterans Day. Thank you. You may be seated. Are there children who would like to come up front for children's sermon? Oh, a 
couple. I do have lollipops, I'm just saying. That changes everything, doesn't it? I got a couple coming out of the balcony. Good deal. Here they come. How you doing? Good. Good. Hi, guys. So a question about moms and dads, kind of grandmas and grandpaps. How do you know they love you? Do they ever tell you? Oh, they do. See, that's good. So one way we know moms and dads love us is they tell us. How else do we know? Oh, she's going to tell me. They show you. She was here earlier, so she knows. They show you exactly. Moms and dads, grandmas and grandpaps, not just tell us they love us, but they show us. Like, none of you guys drove to church this morning, right? Somebody brought you. Must be somebody that loves you. They showed you that they loved you by bringing you to church. And they probably made sure that before you came, you had breakfast. And you didn't come in your pajamas. And they made sure you had a warm bed to sleep in last night. They didn't make you sleep outside without a blanket, did they? I was worried about that. See, our parents show us they love us. And they tell us they love us. Do you know that God does the same thing in his word? The Bible says God tells us that he loves us. Because the scriptures tell us all over the place that God loves us, and we know the Bible's true. But then it also says that God showed us that he loved us when he sent Jesus to die for our sins. And he continues to show us that he loves us by putting his Holy Spirit within us. I wonder if parents maybe learn to show and tell from God. Mm. They show us, they tell us, just like God shows us and tells us that he loves us. You ask your parents over lunch whether that's how they learn to show and tell their love. Maybe it was God that taught them. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you tell us the truth every time. And your word says that you love us, so we know that that's true. And thank you, Father, that you showed us your love by sending your son to die for our sins, by sending your Holy Spirit to live within us by watching over us every single day. Thank you for giving us all parents who also tell us and show us that they love us. We pray this day, Lord, that we would see you as a loving Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. How about lollipop, guys? A couple of prayer concerns that I want to share with you this morning as we spend a few moments in prayer. Paul Aylesworth from our congregation had to have a stint put in this week, but he is home recovering, which is great news. Tim Mung is still in Hammett Hospital. He had an apparent heart attack this last week, um, and they were wanting to do a heart cath, but his kidneys were having some issues. So. Sam and I aren't sure if he's actually had the heart cath yet or is still in the holding process, but we're almost positive he is still in Hammett Hospital. We can be praying for our community. As you know, as I mentioned, we've had a spike in COVID cases, and um, that's made the students have to go hybrid or completely virtual. That's messed with the teaching staff, the administration staff. My son Noah is at Grove City. He's survived two weeks of quarantine. Another time he was on self-isolation. He's supposed to come off self-isolation today for a guy across the hall that they're testing. And Friday he got a second self-isolation. His whole hall got it, so we think maybe it's a professor. Um, I cannot imagine trying to learn in that environment. You don't know from one day to the next whether you're going to be in class, online, what. So you can be praying for our students and their staff. Also asking you to pray for little Lorelai. She's six years old. She has Lyme's disease. She's a friend of Maddie's. Um, And then Stephanie's grandpa, Jack Gracie, had to have a heart cath, and um, we've been praying for him. 
and little, not little, young Tori Stanton. She's little, but she wouldn't appreciate me calling her little. Probably not. Young Tori Stanton, who's a drum major at Oil City, um, turned around and caught a pole between the eyes from one of the silks. And so she, that was a month ago, and she is still suffering from concussion symptoms. So you can be praying for Tori. All right? Let's hold up these things to the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that no matter what we face, you are already there. You are already aware of our struggles, and you always hold us in the palm of your hand. We thank you, Father, that nothing, nothing we encounter is a surprise to you. Nothing we encounter is greater than you. But you are with us every moment of every day. We thank you, Lord, that coronavirus was not a surprise to you, that the spike in our county is not a surprise to you, that the election was not a surprise to you. We thank you, Father, that you are always, every moment of every day, aware of our concerns. And every moment of every day, you hold us and give us what we need. Sometimes that's a hedge of protection. Sometimes that's the courage to walk through the fire. But we do all of it by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, this morning we thank you that you have been watching over Paul Aylesworth and that you have brought him home to recover. We thank you that you are watching over Rich Hart and getting things in place that he may be able to come home soon. We thank you, Lord, you've been caring for Tim Mung in the hospital and pray that you would help his kidneys to heal. We thank you, you've been watching over Tori continue to heal her brain from this concussion. We thank you, you've been watching over Jack Gracie and pray your continued care for him. We thank you that you've been watching over little Lorelei and protecting her even in the midst of her Lyme's disease. And we thank you, Father, that you've been walking with students and faculty and staff as they attempt to keep people safe and yet communicate vital information through education. And we thank you, Father, you've been with our medical community in all that they encounter. May your grace be evident to them every day. Now, Father, in these moments, we just want to breathe in and experience a refreshing of your Holy Spirit. We want to breathe out the stress and the anxiety and the depression and the worry and the fear. And we want to breathe in the confidence and the calm and the peace that is your presence. Move with us, Father, as we dig into your word. May we hear there words that are comforting and encouraging and helpful. We ask all of this in your son's name, and we pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you so much, Beth. She's a brave lady. She's been here through all three services. That's almost like, I don't know, punishment worse than death. Yo. The singing's great. It's, you got to listen to the same message three times. Wow. Hey, if you'll take out your Bibles, we want to turn to the book of 1 John, a small book in the back of your New Testament. We're going to look at the third chapter, verses 11, 16, 17, 18, 23, and 24. Now, interestingly enough, I um, got a comment about our worship services this last Thursday. I was at a meeting, and the uh, lady who was chairing that meeting, her and her husband are both clergy, and her mother-in-law had passed away last week, so they didn't attend worship last week at the churches they serve. They um, had a Sunday off. So she said, I decided we should watch Christ Church. Cool. She said, I didn't think it was you at first. You didn't jump around as much as you do at our meetings. So I guess I need to be a little jumpier so people know it's me. Hey, here we go. 1 John 3, this is what God's word says. You ready? For this is a message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. For anyone, I'm sorry, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. For this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Here ends a reading of God's word. The author of the uh, epistle of 1 John is the same individual that wrote the gospel of John and Revelation and 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. And he weaves in this text some ideas that we want to kind of, two ideas we kind of want to untangle, talk about one this week and one next week, and they are the love that we see in God for us, and then the love that others should see in us for our fellow humans. So I talk about the love seen in God. 1 John 3, 16a says this, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. You see, it wasn't our idea to to unpack love or to, to decide how it should be demonstrated. God did that first. He showed us his love. Interestingly enough, if you simply take away the first in 1 John and you go to the Gospel of John, the third chapter, the 16th verse, you find a very similar idea. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. He gave. You see, here we have God's love. Jesus Christ laid down his life. That's how it's demonstrated. And here we have that God so loved us that he gave his one and only son. So there's three parts to this that I want to pursue today. And they're all taken from the first chapter of Ephesians First from Ephesians 1, 4, it talks about how God pursued us. For he, God, chose us in him, in Christ, before the creation of the world. God's been pursuing us before he he took dirt and formed it into Adam, before he took a part of Adam and made Eve, before the fruit, before the fall, God had already chose you. You see, God is not bound by time and space. And and he looked down through time, space, history, and he sees each of us and he says, I love these people, my creation, and I want to have a relationship with them. And begins pursuing us. In that story of the fall, just after Adam and Eve have eaten the fruit, we hear these words. Genesis 3. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. 
But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? Let's be clear, from what we know about God, this perhaps the first question of God's in the Bible. This is not a question of ignorance. This is not as though God did not know where they were physically. His question is, why are you so far away? Where are you? How, how did you get clear over there when you should be right here next to me? Why is that where you want to be? Not here. And I fear that we find ourselves in that same boat when we have sinned. We find ourselves way far away from God. Not because God has moved, but because we have moved. We hide. Sin causes us to hide from the Father, the one who has been pursuing us for all time. From across the cosmos, he has come to find us. And we keep moving away because of sin. And he has to say, where are you? He chose us before the creation of the world. The second thing God did for us to demonstrate his love is that he has fixed our sin problem. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. You see, if you go to the very next verse in John 3, after John 3, 16, about how God gave his son, we hear these words, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God did not send his son Jesus here on a judgment mission. He sent him here on a rescue mission. He sent him here to reach out and collect you. He knew that sin was a problem between you and him, so he fixed that. He picked a time and a place before time began, and he said, before that moment in time, people will be saved because they know that moment's coming. And after that moment in time, people will be saved because they will know that that moment happened. And that moment is the moment in which Jesus Christ gave his life on a cross, rose from the dead for us. That's how he fixed our sin problem. That's how he rescued us. He didn't come here to, to harangue us or hassle us or point out our faults. He came here to save us, to rescue us from sin. That's a God of love. He continues to show his love by giving us his spirit. Ephesians 1.13 says, when you believed, and that's the key piece there, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit. You see, the word there in Greek that we translate believed is the same Greek word that we get the word faith from, pisto. And, and it's all about when we put all of our eggs in that basket, the basket of Jesus Christ. When we do that, then God puts his Holy Spirit within us. Prior to that, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon prophets, priests, kings, judges, but it did not remain. After the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within you and I and changes how we relate to God and how we relate to the world around us. If you want an interesting activity, crack open this book of Ephesians and look at the first two chapters and you will find all kinds of promises from God of the things he's done for you, the things he's given you, the things he's set up for you. If you can read through the first two chapters of Ephesians and come away thinking you're not loved, then I'm not sure you're reading it in the correct language. It's all about God's love for us. Well, the same concept is there in 1 John 3 and 1 John 4. In fact, 1 John 4 says a little different. It says, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. So to be honest, folks, I've run into a lot of people who know in their left brain, in their logical brain, that God loves humanity. And they have no problem saying God loves the world. God loves you. But when it comes to them believing that God loves them, that God loves me, That's a little harder. For many of us, 
we have had people tell us in our lives that we are somehow so special that God could love everybody else in the world, but not us. That we're somehow too damaged. We've somehow sinned too much. We've somehow done something so wrong that God can't love us. And that's not true at all. God loves us. And he demonstrates that every single moment of your life. Psalm 139 says that he knew you in your mother's womb. He was there at your birth. He walks with you every single day of your life, whether you care about him or not. He's there pursuing, chasing, solving your sin problem, eager for you to believe so he can put his Holy Spirit within you and claim you as his own. Dr. Wardle taught us a prayer when I was in his courses. He called it a little glance. It's six simple words, this prayer, that you repeat six times. Now, I'm getting old, but I can remember six words. God, you love me, don't you? It's one thing to know in our left brain that God loves us. It's another thing to feel that love, to emotionally experience that love, to have that love rush in and transform us deep within. And sometimes in the middle of craziness in our life, in the midst of challenges, in the midst of storms, in the midst of a fire, it's easy to think that maybe God has forgotten us. Maybe God doesn't love us. So I want to invite you to pray with me and to experience this little glance as we pray through these words six times. Share with me in prayer. Father God, I pray in these moments that you would open our hearts to your words. I pray, Father, that you would cancel the assignments of the enemy and you would eradicate any evil messages or any message that somebody has put in us that is not from you, that we would hear your voice, perhaps for the first time, about your love. Speak to us, Lord, we pray. God, you love me, don't you? 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 Father God, there is no place we can go to escape your love. If we go up to the highest heights, you are there. If we go to the lowest depths, you are there. If we rise on the wings of the dawn, if we settle on the far side of the sea, even there your love will find us. Your presence is with us. As we experience the sunshine this day, Father, I pray that it would be a constant reminder of your love. That it would penetrate our doubt and dispel it. That it would, it would work its way inside of us, pursuing every second relieving us of the guilt of sin and offering us an opportunity to believe, perhaps for the first time. Lord,
Lord, in these quiet moments, we thank you for your love. A love that we desperately need, but are never really sure we have. May your Holy Spirit confirm in us that we do indeed have your unconditional, everlasting, boundless love. We ask this in the name of the Christ. Amen and amen. Well, next week we want to take this love of God for a ride and see what happens when we use it in our life with others. Amen. I invite you to stand. Allow the words of this song to be your your prayer, your reflection on today's word, and uh, words of encouragement and promise. We are forgiven. We are forgiven, friends, because of what Christ did because of God's love, allowing that to happen. I'm forgiven because you were Remember, friends, God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. He gave of his best for you and me. And that is, I think, a pretty good prelude 
for us to think about this time of, of offering our prayer of thanksgiving to God and then giving you an opportunity uh, to give. We give because God first gave to us. There are offering plates located in the narthex for those here and those watching from home. There will be a slide in a moment that will give you some instructions. Thank you for your generous support uh, in recent months. And uh, we ask that you would continue to, to be prayerful as to how God would have you give. And if you're watching and you're part of another church, then we encourage you to support your local church first. Let us pray and give thanks. God, we give thanks because you are the one who gave more than we could ever, ever imagine to give. You have done so much for us, Lord, tangible things and daily matters that we notice and many, many more things that we don't notice. But you give us, through your grace, all that we need. And Lord, most of all, we remember the greatest gift of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to seek and save the lost, the one who came not to condemn, but the one who came to save us. Lord, we offer our gifts as our thanks. Accept them, O oh Lord and use them so that others may come to know the wonderful love of God and experience that for themselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, we've come to the end of our service. And I pray that today you got the chance to touch God's face. And that was transformative. Go in peace now. And may the peace of Christ walk with you wherever you find yourself today. In Jesus' name, amen.